Hey everybody, welcome back to Building Your Empire with Sophie Zoe. I'm so excited for this week's guest. Oh, I'm excited for all my guests. But today we have a very special friend and colleague. Her name is Emmy Kirshner. She is an investor, serial entrepreneur, coach, and host of the Tribe of Leaders podcast. Emmy's mission is to empower women entrepreneurs in reaching beyond seven figures by helping them build more profitable businesses that create the change they want to see in the world. Masterfully combining her deeply intuitive abilities with her analytical sense, plus her 12 plus years of entrepreneurial experience, Emmy guides her clients in becoming the best versions of themselves, growing connected teams, and building authentic sales. As the host of the Tribe of Leaders podcast, Emmy interviews successful entrepreneurs who share their stories of success and failure in growing their business and the leadership skills they attained along the way. Every January through May, Emmy puts on her instructor hat for a group of brilliant 7th to 12th graders and teaches them how to write a business plan and pitch to investors. Ooh, doesn't that sound cool, y'all? When she isn't working, you can find Emmy sipping coffee and wearing flip-flops where she lives in Philadelphia or seeking sunshine and visible beaches up and down the East Coast. She's a woman after my own heart. Coffee and beaches. Hey, all we need to do is add Harry Potter to the mix and we are kith and kin. <laughs> Welcome to the show, Emmy. I'm so excited to have you here today. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited. And I have to share that the it's the Young Entrepreneurs Academy. It's It's like herding cats and I love it. Like, <laughs> oh, I can imagine, especially of, if you're going as young as seventh and eighth graders. Ooh, yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. But the, the transformation that they experience and the ideas that they have are just incredible. And I love seeing their minds at work. So, oh, I'm yes. That, it sounds amazing. All righty. Let's jump in, Emmy. The question I ask all my guests, what is your best advice for business owners who want to scale from six to seven figures and beyond? be consistent which sounds really easy really really easy and it's so much harder because be consistent in everything be consistent in your sales be consistent in how you show up in your marketing be consistent with your team and how you're onboarding people how you're meeting people how you're motivating people how you're measuring things um, how you're setting up your systems and processes it for me is the one thing that I see people get tripped up on because they get busy in the day to day and then they don't track their numbers or they don't make calls or they don't post on social or they don't do whatever or and or they're not being supported in, in those areas um, as well. So it's it's the up and down and kind of that roller coaster ride feast or famine, whatever you want to call it that keeps um, entrepreneurs overwhelmed and exhausted and really doing more than they have to, like feeling like they, they can't bring on more people because they're so busy all the time. I love that. And I love that you, a, that you covered all the areas because, you know, consistency can mean so many things and it's like, okay, consistency in what? Consistency in everything. I also love that you brought in the fact that you don't do it alone. No, <laughs> you bring in team, you bring in tech, you bring in systems, you do all those things. So do you kind of have step by step isn't quite the right wording there, but you know, it's like, okay, you got this entrepreneur, they've hit six figures, they're killing themselves because they're doing most of it by themselves. What mm -hmm. is their first step? Is it building that team or is it trying to systemize, systemize what they do on their own? How do you, what, what do you think their next step is after they've hit six figures and they're killing it and they're killing themselves and they know they need to grow, they want to grow. What is the yeah, yeah. first next best step? Yeah, absolutely. And let me, let me also say too, like you cannot get to a million dollars in revenue and beyond on your own. Like you've got to have support. Like, so start thinking about that. Think about what it looks like. But for me, what I start with is their mindset, right? Like I want my clients to start thinking like a CEO and not like an employee. Mm -hmm. And as the solopreneur, a lot of times that's what they're doing. They're like, I just got to get done. I got to get it done, blah, blah, blah. And there's not a lot of thought process in what are my top three priorities for this year, this quarter, this month, this week, this day. And 
who do I need to help me? So then, you know, once we're, we've kind of played with the, the mindset and they're taking ownership of what their real role is, then I would say it's, it's um, bringing on the team. Even if it's a contract worker, even if it's an intern, even if it's, you know, it's something small, it's teeny tiny to help, you know, offload some of the responsibility. And I like to use the example um, of if you're paying somebody less than what your value is, then it is one of the best investments that you can make. Uh, yes, you used my favorite word. It's an investment. It's not an expense. It's it's an investment in yourself, yeah. in your business, in your vision, because when I know so many people look at it as expenses because they're looking at their numbers, but all they see is income expense, income expense. They don't understand that certain expenses mm -hmm. are actual investments and, and they, because they think of an investment as something in the stock market that's going to make money or a savings account that's going to earn interest. And we, the, so the mindset that you spoke of is about switching it from doing it myself, having to pay for the expense of someone else to do it. Cause it's not an expense. It's an investment because you've got to have that investment. So another avenue of support that most people talk about is coaches and mentors mm -hmm. and things like that. I mean, obviously you're a coach, so you fully yes. believe in coaches and mentors. <laughs> Otherwise you wouldn't be doing this. So um, coaches and mentors, do you think there is a prescribed, so to speak, time that a person should spend with a particular coach or mentor to get where they're going? Or do they need to have multiple coaches and mentors at the same time? What is your philosophy on, on how that works and best works, at least for you and your clients? Yeah, so I think, um, it's a couple of different things. It's like, it's, what are your goals? Right? So, like, I worked with a woman last year who had like 3 different business coaches way too many. And we were all telling her different things to do to launch her course. None of us were wrong, but. You know, right, because we all have different strategies, different ways of doing things. They were all kind of aligned, but the steps were different. And what happened with her is she ended up delaying her course being launched by months and she was just confused. So in that place, it's not, I think that's too much. Um, I am not a believer that you're supposed to be working with the same coach for forever. Um, most of my clients work with me for a couple of years, um, which can be a really long time for other coaches, but I expect my clients to level out and and go somewhere else and i will not renew people if i feel like they need to be served by somebody else or if they're they're not doing the work i did that with a client this um the end of 2021 i didn't renew her because i'm like you aren't doing the work like you can pay me all you want but you're not getting results and our time together has been fantastic you've made great strides and you've moved forward but it's time for you to kind of think about where your commitments are. And I don't want your money until that you figure that out. And then I love that. Cause that's, oh my gosh, that is such an ethical and professional process because I, there are so many coaches out there and this, these are the coaches that give great coaches like you a bad name or well, all coaches, a bad name is they will sign people up for their program and they won't give a damn if they're actually doing the work. And if they're giving results, they just want to have, it's like a processing plan. It's like people in, people out, people in, yeah. people out. Whereas you actually, you're invested in your clients, just like your clients are invested in you. And I love that because there are so many coaches out there that just have these programs that you come in and you listen to them and, you know, but they don't hold you accountable to doing the work, to doing what mm -hmm. you're telling them to do. And, and they, and then people, then they, you know, everybody's like, well, I didn't get any results out of that. It didn't work. And then they say, you know, after the program's over, they let, look at them and say, well, you didn't do the work. So, you know, that's why you didn't get the results. And it's like, oh, so you're not going to do any kind of accountability, you know, because some coaches are like, well, I'm not going to hold your hand and I'm not going to make you do it. Well, there's a difference between accountability, appropriate yeah. professional accountability and 
you know, hold hand, you know, holding their hands, so, you know, doing it for them, so to speak, you know, and I, you know, you gave her, him or her, you know, chance to, to buck up and do the work. And, but then you said, okay, yeah. you're not doing the work. So I'm going to cut it off and quit taking your money. Yeah. And she owned it. Like, she's like, I know I'm not, she's like, I'm kind of in this place. And we talked about what that was like. And it's not like, I was just like, oh, well, you're in this indecision. I'm just going to leave you there too. That was not the conversation, but the way I have my business structured and what works best for how I want to serve is you get a lot of my attention and I'll come get you if you're hiding. And, and because part of it, cause that's, that's how people get to the next level. Right. But right. I'm not cranking people through programs and I won't ever do that because it's not, it's not what works for me. It's not what gets results. And right. all of my clients get results. Even this woman who, um, you know, we're not working together, but for the last two years, she's kicked butt. And that's amazing. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. And now, do you have a, I mean, and, I, and not just your, like in your business structure specifically, what are your thoughts on one-to-one -one coaching as of, opposed to a group coaching program, mastermind, whatever, you know, they have multiple names, but you know, a coach who does um, group coaching, uh, what do you, what do you, what are your thoughts on that as far as someone getting that kind of mentorship? I do all of my um, programs have a one on one component to it, because for me, that's when I have, even if it's 20 minutes, like, even if I have a really short period of time with somebody once a month, that that means that I'm getting my issues dealt with and my concerns and my everything handled just addressed by what I need. Um, so that's the way I coach too. And my high level mastermind has both of those together. They get coaching calls with me and then there's all sorts of group stuff, um, components where they're really holding themselves accountable also because it's become a sisterhood. Um, yep. and not that group coaching is bad. I'm not saying that like I have a group coaching program. It's going to be relaunched later this year there will be an individual coaching piece to the group coaching um, because I feel like that's where you get the best results. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. I like that because, you know, and I've seen, you know, I work with coaches and consultants and help them do the things they do for their clients, their coaching programs, all those things. So I've seen a lot over the years, you know, the, the person who sticks to one-to-one, -one, no matter what, mm -hmm. and then they get stuck because that's all they want to do but they won't raise their prices, but they want to make more money. And that, you know, and they just, they go round and round with themselves because, you know, and it's okay that you only want to do one-on-one -on -one coaching, but if you really want to make money at it, you've got to be willing to, or to raise your prices to the price point that makes you that money because you can't charge $10,000 a client and want to make half, you know, $5 million because, <laughs> Do you know how many clients that is? I can't even do that. I mean, I could technically do that math in my head. It's like, there are not enough hours in the day, enough time no, in your life no. to serve that many clients to make at $5 million. So I love that you, you almost always include a one-to-one -one component in your group coaching. Cause that's really, it is important because, you know, it's great to be in a group setting and have the coach teaching everybody. And even if there's Q and A and hot seats and those things, cause that can technically be one-on-one, -on -one, but it's in front of the group. Um, but, you know, it does, you know, having that personal connection mm -hmm. with the client, even though they're in a group program, I really like that because, you know, I've, I've been in different group programs over the years where there was no, basically zero one-to-one -one like you give. It's, you know, an office hours call with anybody who wants to show up and, you know, different things like that. And for me, that works. But for some people, they need that dedicated one-on-one -on -one time with the coach mm -hmm. without having having the coach say, oh, well, if you want more time with me, you have to do a VIP day or a different program, or you have to do the upgrade to the one-on-one, -on -one, which they may or may right. not be able to afford. So, you know, you're kind of in this conundrum. So I really like that you cover both in what you do, but you don't dismiss what other coaching programs have and don't have because everybody is different in how they learn right. and what kind of what what kind of interaction they need in the program absolutely absolutely and i've been in um, group programs where there was no one-to-one -one, 
um, you know, contact. And I did well on them. I, for me, I like the one-on-one -on -one component piece. So that's part of my business. And for me, the way, you know, we're structuring that is I'll have other coaches that will manage some of the group programs so that they can be bigger, but still have that, that individual, um, component and, and that high touch feel too. So. Right. right. Excellent. Yeah. All right. So we've talked about support from, you know, hiring people and or a team, having mm -hmm. a coach or mentor. Let's, let's get to the all, the all encompassing, the all important one, family, friends, and the people you surround yourself with in your other life, your, your non-business life, so to speak. You know, everybody says, you know, surround yourself with people who support you, no matter what, who love you, no matter what, who believe in you. What happens when you have a naysayer in your life? What do you, <laughs> what do you think? What is, what is your philosophy? How do you handle with yourself and your clients? You know, the naysayer and whether it be the spouse, partner, mother, father, whatever friend. What is, you know, what is your take on that? Yeah, so for me, you have two teams in your life. You have your business team and your life team. Some of those members on either one of those teams cross over. So it's not like you got to keep them separate. Um, so, and for me, that life team is really crucial because it's feeding me and those naysayers aren't doing that. So it's really identifying who's bringing you down or who's not supportive. And um, for me, because like my family doesn't, my parents and my um, sister, like they have no idea what I do. Like they, they don't, and they're not entrepreneurial in spirit and that's okay. So I perplex them and that's okay. I accept that. So I just don't, for me, it, it's taken years to get to this place where they where they say random things because in their hearts they want to be supportive. Right. I just don't let it bother me anymore, which is easy to say, harder to practice. But I'm always keeping in mind that they come from place. The reason why that they're saying certain things because is because they're concerned. Like they're they really have my well being at heart through their filter and through their eyes, and. They want to be supportive in a way that just doesn't work for me. So I give them a lot of grace that way. But I also, for me, limit contact with people who aren't, you know, outside of family I, with, that aren't in the same place, that don't align with my values. I have a very finite amount of time to spend with my great friends. And it's for me a continual process of letting go of people who don't align and and not like just letting go of friendships casually, but sometimes that happens. And sometimes for me, people have come into my life and we've been great friends and then we've moved apart and that's okay. Love it. Yes, yes. And I yeah, I'm my mother God rest her soul before, you know, before she passed away, she never got what I wanted. Now she never really, she never like naysayed it or anything, but she definitely didn't get what I do because I'll never forget the first time I, um, when I first hired housekeepers mm -hmm. and I told my mother that I had a housekeeper, she was like, why you just sit around all day and don't do anything why would you need a housekeeper you can do it yourself and i was just like oh man <laughs> no mom i don't just sit around all day and do nothing i'm doing work from home in and all home office on a computer she just totally didn't get it yeah um so you know i just we just didn't talk about what i do very often because it just it was a you know i it, it you can't it's like you know saying the same thing over and over again, trying to get through to somebody, you know, the, the definition of, of insanity, doing the same right. thing over and over again and expecting a different result. I'm just like, we didn't, we just stopped talking about what I do. So, <laughs> and just had a, a, a mother daughter relationship outside of that because, yeah. which you know, and she could make that, we could both make that decision and that, that piece. And it wasn't, you know, in malice or, you know, it wasn't, it was just, I didn't bring it up. She didn't bring it up. So we just didn't talk about it. We talked about everything else instead. So I totally yeah. get that. I, uh, I really believe in setting myself and everybody else up 
for success as much as possible. So if you know that somebody isn't supportive, a family member isn't aligned with you being an entrepreneur, don't tell them about it as much. Like don't look for them to support you because they can't give it to you. They may right. want to, right? They just may not be able to in this moment. And maybe three months from now, they'll like things will realign. I've seen that happen too. Um, but find the support somewhere else. Because it's out there. We want to help you. Um, but I, I really, it's setting expectations too. Definitely. I love it. I love it. Well, it's about time for us to wrap up. So Emmy, tell my people where they can find you, where, where they can learn more. And if you've got something to offer them, give that a shout out to let them know what they can do. Yeah, absolutely. So um, you can find me on about all the social channels. Um, I'm mostly on LinkedIn and um, Instagram, but I'm on Facebook too. You can check me out at the Tribe of Leaders um, on Apple Podcasts and wherever else you're listening to podcasts. And my new website is going to be launched. Actually, by the time this airs, it'll be launched. So emmykirshner.com. Yeah, I'm so excited. I just got the pretty picture of what it's going to look like. It's gorgeous. Wow. So oh. and you and I had a conversation about it, like it being time. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. And I just did redid mine in Q4 of last of 2021 last year. So I know what I know that feeling of, oh my gosh, this new look is so amazing. Why yeah. didn't I do so, this sooner? Whew. Yeah. But all and right, I, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, go ahead. I said, but I'd love to be able to invite people to um, I've been having so much fun with this lately, is being able to do a rev up your revenue audit. And I basically sit down with you for half an hour or so, and we talk about your sales processes and where the gaps are in where you're leaving money on the table. Because most people, when it comes to sales, most entrepreneurs are missing so many opportunities and easy clients or customers to close. So I show you where all those are and give you an action plan to kind of move forward and make more money easily. Yeah. Awesome. Is that, can they find that at your website to, to yes. sign up for that? Yes. There's awesome. a little, little button there. Just click on that. Hey, well, you heard it. There is a way to get a chat with her to find out where you're leaving money on the table. Cause let's not leave money on the table. Y'all we're in business to make money. Yeah. So like, let's make the money. <laughs> it's something like 80% of all sales are not closed because we don't have the right systems and processes and we don't follow up enough. Mm, yeah, that's, I've, I've, yeah, I can, I've, I've been guilty of that on occasion. <laughs> so <laughs> know how, I know what you're saying. Well, thank you so much for being on the show, Emmy. To my listeners, I'm going to let you all go. We appreciate you being here. If you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe, leave a comment, let us know what you think, and I'll see y'all next week. Thank you and bye everybody.